Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to this, the most important lesson of chapter one. Dimensional analysis is a powerful mathematical tool that you will use in around half or more of all general chemistry exam questions. By following the rules laid out in this lesson, you will learn a systematic and visually logical way to solve math confidently in Chem 101. In my opinion, the most important thing you'll learn in this class isn't even chemistry, it's dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is magic, but in order for it to work properly, you have to keep numbers next to their units. This is because dimensional analysis applies algebra to units during the process of conversions. There are seven fundamental math concepts you need to understand before you can do the dimensional analysis dance. There's a good chance you know most of them already, but we'll go through them one at a time so you can level up your dance ability. First, dimensional analysis utilizes fractions extensively. The rule one is that fractions show division. That is, the numerator of a fraction is divided by the denominator. The second rule, if the top and bottom of a fraction are equivalent, then the fraction equals one, even if the numbers aren't the exact same on the top and the bottom. Rule three, anything multiplied by one is unchanged. Next, as I've said, dimensional analysis is a way to convert between units. Rule number four, there are many equivalent ways. <clears throat> Rule four, there are many equivalent ways to compare two units. Scientists use metric units, which are often easier to represent by powers of 10. Rule five, the word per means that we're dealing with fractions. For example, there are 100 centimeters per meter, or equivalently, there is one centimeter per 0 0.01 meters. Notice that in each of these cases, the numerator equals the denominator for every one of these fractions. Therefore, rule two tells us that these fractions equal one. Lastly, in dimensional analysis, we frequently have to invert fractions. Rule six, inverting a fraction means switching its numerator and its denominator. Rule seven, fractions equivalent to one can be inverted without changing the value of the fraction. And there you go, that's it. You've leveled up and met the level requirements for doing the dance. Let's try it out. Remember, Dimensional analysis needs numbers and units in order to be effective. If you write numbers without units in DA, you will get lost and even a level one enemy might defeat you. That's a game over. We'll set up a dimensional analysis problem as a series of one or more conversions. The bread and butter of dimensional analysis are these conversion factors. We can form a conversion factor out of an equivalency, such as one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, and many conversion factors will be given to you in the problem. Anytime you see a number with units expressed as a fraction, boom, circle that, it's a conversion factor. Let's do a simple conversion as an example. How many inches? are in 11 centimeters. Well, first we'll start with 11 centimeters, and then we need to multiply by some sort of conversion factor like this one above. How do we know which unit goes on the top and which unit goes on the bottom of our conversion factor? Well, in a proper conversion, the old unit will be canceled out, leaving the new and desired unit remaining. I really recommend crossing out your units, not only to check your work, but also because it's kind of relaxing. When we're sure that the old units cancel and the new unit remains, plug the math into your calculator and then round your answer to the right number of sig figs. The true power of dimensional analysis is real, revealed on longer problems with many successive conversions. The next slide will include one such longer problem, and I'd like you to practice organizing your dimensional analysis in the following way. First, on the very left side, you want to put your starting unit. 
And on the very right side, you want to put your ending unit. Doing the dance requires multiplying your starting unit by a series of conversion factors to end up at your final unit. Each conversion factor will be a fraction. I've highlighted these in blue. Some people prefer to use the train tracks method, which includes all the same information I've shown above, but just a little bit different way to organize it. Please pick your preference. Make sure you leave enough room for all the conversion factors, which you will get them from the problem text or your prerequisite knowledge of the material. All right, let's rock and roll. Please pause this video and convert the height of Angel Falls from feet to kilometers. All right, well, I hope you got your answer. I will now solve the problem. The first step is to set up the planned conversions. Well, we're starting at feet. We want to end up at kilometers. I've already hinted that you'll need four conversion factors to get there. And conveniently in the box to the right, we have four conversion factors. Our goal in choosing the correct conversion factors is to cancel out the units on the left. So my order for this conversion is as follows. The first fraction converts feet on the bottom to inches on the top. The next fraction converts inches to centimeters. Then we convert centimeters to meters. Finally, we convert meters to kilometers. It's a good idea to check your unit cancellation. All units should cancel, except the desired unit of the answer, which is kilometers. After I feel confident that I have a path from start to finish, I'll plug the numbers of the conversion factor into this framework. Notice that some of the fractions have been inverted in order for the correct units to cancel. Lastly, and most easily, plug those numbers into your calculator. I recommend multiplying across the top and then dividing across the bottom as I've shown here. 